making quite a bit of news themselves. And throughout the year on Eyewitness News at 5, media commentator Michael Boyle kept us up to date on what the print, radio, television, and film industries were up to, and what some enterprising individuals accomplished using these media. Here's Michael with a look back at the Minnesota media, year 1982. The following is a special presentation of the Rex Hubbard Ministry. Two new ultra-high-frequency TV stations made their debut in 82. Channel 29 arrived in late September with a mix of religion and entertainment. Channel 41 in St. Cloud went on the air in November, offering reruns, movies, The Rocky Show, and a signal that definitely requires a rooftop UHF antenna for good reception. But this is about the best picture that I can come up with. Some public television stations began broadcasting commercials to generate revenues. In January, we speculated on how Sesame Street might look interspersed with spot announcements. Okay, okay, I got cookies, cookies. And we'll return after these messages. Mmm, delicious. I bet these fudge stripes go fast. Fortunately, it never reached those proportions. Steve Edelman and Sharon Anderson returned to local TV on KSTP-TV's Good Company in June. I didn't make too many predictions in 1982, but one I got right was this one about a great actress's performance in Golda. I'm predicting an Emmy nomination for sure and probably an award for Ingrid Bergman. The future of television was dramatically affected in November when the Federal Communications Commission granted licenses for direct broadcast satellite systems. Minnesota-based United States Satellite Broadcasting was among the original group of licensees. Two unusual media projects were completed in the state in 1982. Swan Lake, Minnesota was taped in August for ABC Arts Cable Service. And practically the entire town of Milan, Minnesota got a chance to appear in a movie called Foreclosure that was filmed in September. The work of school-age writers read by child actors became an intriguing new radio program called Child Voice in November. When I was small, we went to Grandpa and Grandma's house. In the summer, the flowers bloomed, cherries ripened, and apples flourished, along with Grandpa's poetry. The mom-and-pop family-run radio station proved to be more than a myth when KMGM went on the air in Montevideo, Minnesota in September. The station made news later when it invited the governor-elect of Minnesota to debate the governor of South Dakota. The Minneapolis Star was combined with the Tribune to become one newspaper in April. The move was followed by a substantial number of staff layoffs, and the end of the year finds both editor Charles Bailey and publisher Donald Dwight out of the picture. A New Hampshire-based parody publisher came out with not the Star and Tribune in December. Some people didn't find it very funny. I didn't think it was very funny. It has been a rough year, but we haven't lost our sense of humor. In fact, at a time like this, we could have used the last all the more. Paul Pioneer Press and Dispatch invested over $40 million in a new state-of-the-art printing facility in 1982, and they hired a controversial religion writer named Clark Morphew, who regularly reviews church services. A brand-new national newspaper called USA Today made its debut in the Twin Cities in September, and the neighborhood Sun newspapers continued to buck the trend and increase circulation. Ready? Clamped a pair of PV's heavy denim jeans between two pickup trucks for a tug of war. Minnesota's national advertising production continued to increase. Veteran actor Claude Akins came to the Twin Cities in July to film a spot for a blue jeans company. Animals played a prominent role in Twin Cities' produced commercials. The golden plump chickens battled out of state broilers, and those cute brown photo raccoons were never quite able to destroy that snapshot of themselves. And finally, in October, we found out how they exploded those eggs in the Perkins commercials.
Michael Boyle, your KSTP TV media commentator. And that's just a sampling of uh, some of the media stories, big and small, from the year 1982. Michael Boyle's regular media uh, commentaries can be seen during the week on Eyewitness News at 5 o'clock. Well, the